Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And hey, look, it's another week. But guess what? Was guess what's gonna happen this weekend? Guess what? The Dallas Cowboys are gonna win this weekend. You know why? <laughs> Cause it's a bye week and we don't have a game. So that's a W. Um, the one week out of the football season where Cowboy fans don't have to stress. We could just sit back, relax, eat some good food, and watch other teams play this weekend. And we ain't got to play. We ain't got to stress about our team. But there's really no stress to be had, really. Oh, um, pardon the box in the back. I'm at work. I'm just moving things around. I got some work shoes back here. You know, I, I control the inventory for my job. So, you know, when new people come in i gotta get their uniforms and shoes and stuff so i'm always moving stuff around so ignore that i'm right here Bop. anyway um a lot of things to talk about um i didn't get a chance to do a video i've been busy this week oh um, but um as you heard um the cowboys did release um uh, Tristan Hill, defensive tackle, and he did get picked up off of waivers uh, by the Arizona Cardinals. So um, I didn't think he'd get picked up that fast, but, you know, I'm pretty sure the Cowboys tried to will and deal him. They tried to trade him, but there were no suitors. So I guess other teams probably thought that, oh, yeah, they're probably going to get rid of Tristan Hill. So this is the big problem I have with the Dallas Cowboys organization, and it's primarily with the Jones or the Joneses themselves. Or should I say Jerry? Because Jerry talks too goddamn much. Jerry just needs to shut up sometimes. And I'm just like, don't get me wrong. I love Jerry Jones. I love my team. I love the organization. I love the Joneses. But I understand that he's a businessman, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Make your money, bruh. I mean, he's 80 years old at this point. He, he's made so much money. I mean, he, he's got enough. I mean, he, he's he's set for his life, his kid's life, their kid's life. He good. But, Jerry, just got to stop talking so much. Like, because you let other teams know what you're doing. And that's not a, that's not a smart thing. When, you, when you're trying to will and deal people, you don't put out there what you're what you're trying to do or that you have discerned for this player or you don't you don't want this player or you want this player or nobody needs to know that because when you show that enthusiasm other teams are like oh they're a little pressed so they know how to play checkers and spades which uh, and 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 chess which we don't have we don't have a poker face we just go out there and we just we just reveal everything. So that's why we never really do good in trades because teams know who we trying to keep and who we trying to not to. So they're looking at it like this. Oh, they want to trade Tristan Hill? Well, we'll just wait for you to release him and then we'll get him. Because I'm pretty sure Arizona knew that they were trying to trade him, but Arizona probably also knew that the Cowboys probably didn't really, that he was going to be dead weight, that they didn't, they didn't need nor want Tristan Hill anymore. So with that being said, with the signing of Jonathan Hankins or the trade of Jonathan Hankins, that was the trade that they did. I know that the Cowboys wanted us to get a wide receiver. I know they wanted us to get Roquan Smith, especially after what was given for Roquan Smith. I know that really pissed off Cowboy fans, but it's okay though, because we'll find other ways to, to get what we need, right? Um, tough cookie. It is what it is. If you're a Cowboy fan, you should already be used to this stuff. You know that the Cowboys don't do a lot of willing and dealing. They don't... They do things... Excuse me. They do things... Um, in a certain way that it's like, you know, we like to call it bargain bin shopping. Um, but they're very methodical on the way that they, their approach to um, retaining and getting rid of players. Now, Tristan Hill was technically a second-round pick. So you release the second-round pick, but 
in a trade situation, you don't want to give up a second round pick. Well, you just did with Tristan Hill. Technically, he's a second round pick. So you did give up a second round pick. So I don't understand the narrative of, oh, we don't want to we don't want to trade away high picks. Well, did you trade away a first for Amari Cooper when you first got him? And then all of a sudden now you don't like Amari and you want to trade him for a ham sandwich, a fifth round draft pick. But he's still a top 10 receiver in this league and one of the best route runners in this league and doing well for the Browns with a sorry ass quarterback. I'm sorry, Brissett. So. No shade of Jacoby, I'm just saying. Here with the Dallas Cowboys. The fan base looks at it like. Uh, woe is me. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. But look, let's go back to the beginning of the season. Dak Prescott gets his thumb messed up. We're without him for the next four games. Or, yeah. Cooper Rush comes in. He does his thing. He starts winning you some games. Dak Prescott comes back. The last two games we won. Now we're six and two. Hmm. Nobody saw that coming. Also, nobody saw the Giants start winning as well. So, which at that time put us in third place in the NFC East because the Eagles are still undefeated. All Cowboys got to do is take care of their own. They just have to just win. This schedule, this season is favorable for the Cowboys to not only go to the NFC Championship game, but all the way. You know, those of you that are new to the channel, you don't know me as well. But those of you that have been with me since the beginning when I had my locks and everything, y'all know how I roll when it comes to things. I don't normally ever say, Oh, this is the Cowboys year. This is the time they could go to the Super Bowl. No, no, no. Only reason why that I'm saying that they have a possibility of going far this year is because everything seems like it's shaping well for our, not just the Cowboys, but our division as a whole. The Eagles are still undefeated. The Giants are doing well. Even the Commanders are starting to win some games. There's divisions where if the Washington Commanders were in that division, they would probably be in second place. But in our division, because we're dominating, they're in, they're in, they're in the bargain basement. So they're trying to they're trying to get better. So the Cowboys got to stay on their toes. We got to get better at the run defense. I love the defense as a whole. Um, this bye week helps because we get guys rested up so they can come back for that 425 uh, Packer game next week. Aaron Rodgers haven't been playing well this year. Tom Brady's team is not playing well this year. You look at the top teams now, you look on the AFC side, I would say the Bills and the Chiefs, and those are the top two on that side. You look at the NFC, I would say the Eagles, Cowboys, 49ers, and Vikings. Oh, and I guess you could add the Ravens on that AFC side too. Um, if the playoffs were to start now, like today, right now, Cowboys to face uh, with the Vikings. And then the Eagles. And then possibly go to the NFC title game. There's guys that's been working for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm talking about media staff like Nick Eatman and all them. Never seen, never seen a Cowboys team go to the NFC title game. That's a damn shame. 
we need to give props to Mike McCarthy and stop hating on Mike McCarthy for fixing the defense, uh, the discipline of the team, fixing the penalties that we used to have a lot with the team, um, helping Kellen Moore to not be so pass happy all the time. Coming up with a assertive play calling um, situation for the game, whatever situation may be. But this is the thing with Kellen Moore; he's consistently inconsistent, right? We all talk about that. There's a lot of you guys that don't want to see him here, but Kellen Moore is not as bad as we say he is, right? I know that we get tired because I get irritated with it too. You know, he'll do something great, and he'll start moving the ball down the field, and then all of a sudden, let's throw a trick play in there. No, stop, stop, stop. That's college shit. Stop, stop. You got to – Keller Moore, those, that type of coordinator, right, where you got to look at him, you got to grab his hand and be like, stop, stop. You got to – I got to treat him like my three-year-old. Stop, stop it. I don't understand why why are we doing this? And I get it, I know, I know, but as long as Mike McCarthy is grabbing him and pulling back the reins, like hey Kellen Moore, stop doing that bullshit. Calling good games, we'll be fine. Perfect example of this. Now I love I love this I love the trade of Jonathan Hankins as he learns his playbook and gets into his role. He played 33 snaps in the last game, which is much more than I thought he would. But when he was in the game, he he was an impact. So going forward, now that you don't have Tristan Hill no more, when Neville Gall Gallimore gets that 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 wrist um, and arm straight, when he comes back in the fold, it's going to help him, Odigizua, and um, Carlos Watkins, as well as, you know, Hankins coming in there and being that uh, first and second down um, run stuffer. And then you take Jonathan Hankins out third, third, um, uh, third down, and then put your, put your Nevilles in there, put your Odigizua's in there, put your Carlos Watkins in there, let those ends eat lunch quarterback patties that's what we do um i think we got like goddamn 30 something sacks like we're leading the league in in sacking quarterbacks like we just it's just it's just sack city out there that they, they need to they need to change this defense's name to sack city that's what they that's what it's called matter of fact i might change my fantasy team name to sack city i like that i can't do sack city because so i think somebody's name is kind of similar to that in the league but anyway but anyway but um, give Mike McCarthy his flowers. Now, this team is going, and we'll talk more about that um, next week as well going into, because, you know, it's a bye week. So um, we got plenty of time to, to talk about going forward to Green Bay. But right now the Cowboys are resting. Well-needed rest. They, they give them four days now to rest. So, Guys that are on, you know, rehab or, or, or had, that have injuries, they're getting treated and things of that nature. You might see, you might see James Washington come back either this Packer game or the week after that. I'm looking forward to see, seeing James Washington because I look at him differently than some of you guys. Some of you guys are like, why do we get James Washington? He ain't that good, blah, blah. I think he's a little better than we think he is. Um, I just think he was stuck in a wide receiver core with back there with Ben Roethlisberger when Ben Roethlisberger was going through his his final stages of being a quarterback, and then they had uh, Mason Rudolph throwing to him at the time, and it was just it was just a lot, and Mason wasn't really like had a good rapport with James. I just think that James Washington is a perfect wide receiver for Dak Prescott because he has similar ways of Michael Gallup. He's like a thicker Michael Gallup. Um, and he can catch the ball deep. He's he's like to me. He's like a hybrid between uh, C.D. Lamb and and Michael Gallup. He has a little bit of both of them, right? He can catch the deep ball, or he can catch 
on the run like CD Lamb does and get you some 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 yak yardage. Uh, and that's what you need, right? Who's our number one? Well, it's supposed to be CD Lamb, right? But if you look at it right now, I don't really think you can just say this wide receiver. I have numbers like, oh, well, you're the first one. I'm the second one. You're the third one. You're the fourth one. I think for the way that we're going is more so wide receiver by committee. We tried doing that before. It didn't work. I mean, that's only because we had trash wide receiver. I hate to say players are trash because these guys, you know, been playing football in their lives. I don't like to disrespect people's craft. But they weren't as good as what we have right now, right? So that year when we had those, those I, I call them the replacement wide receivers. <laughs> that was the year of the Allen Hearns and, and Deontay Tom, Thompson and and um, who who's that other? It was just a bunch of bullshit that we had on there. And then now you got Noah Brown, you got CeeDee Lamb, you got um, James Washington, you got I mean, they don't use Tolbert. They're not using Houston right now. But again, these are guys that you already have in your wheelhouse that you can use. And if things go a certain way, you can put them in as their skill set says. Now, Keller Moore is not a professional like Dan Quinn is. So he's not going to be like, because Dan Quinn is good at looking at a player and be like, oh, this is what you do best. Let's utilize this. Keller Moore still learning that. And one last thing before I end the video. Uh, my man Cowboys Talk, shout out to him. He was talking about this on his video the other day. And I wanted to mention it as well because I did notice it in the game. Um, but I was saving it. But I'm going to go ahead and speak on it now because he already brought it out. So I'm going to say my piece on it too. I don't know what you call this formation. But the Cowboys, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Cowboys went with a three tight end set. Not 12 personnel, more like 13 personnel with a little flair to it, right? You got three tight ends, two wide receivers, no backs, no backs. So you had Schultz, Hendershot, and Jake Ferguson out there. CeeDee Lamb, um, um, I'm going to say Mark Hoover, CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup. Ooh. And they were running that set in no huddle. And they were making multiple plays down the field with that set. Cowboys need to hurry up and like LLC this or however you do it. Copyright that. Call it the Wild Wild West offense or something. Or call it um, three tight end streak formation. Something. Something. Um, three the hard way. Something. But that shit was beautiful, and it was innovative. It was Kellen Moore-ish. Kellen Moore, do that shit. I don't want to see that putting, okay, if you're going to put somebody in the backfield, though, right, don't do that with CeeDee Lamb because CeeDee Lamb is your number one receiver. You don't want to put him in harm's way because if you do it and you don't fake it to him and you actually give it to him and you're playing against a defense that's throwing eight men in the box and they're coming at you blitzing, they're going to tear little CD Lamb up, and you don't need that. CD Lamb's too small for that. Um, look, Turpin is small too, but Turpin, you can utilize him like that because he's that shifty guy. I would rather you, if you're going to do that three tight end thing like that, I would do the three tight ends that we just said. I would do um, Pollard, Pollard as a receiver and, and Turpin. Those are your two fastest runners, right? Put both of them there with the three tight ends because you have an option to either throw it to one of the three tight ends in the flat or you can do an end around either way with either Turpin or, or, or Pollard, which will gain a lot of yardage. Like, you talking about the screen, a wheel, you can run a wheel route off of that. There's so many different things you can do with that. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. That play action is just beautiful. And with Dak Prescott, with that RPO, you don't know if Dak's going to run it himself. He's going to give it to Pollard or Turpin or one of the all of the tight ends. So the linebackers are just looking at Dak's eyes, trying to figure out where he's going. But Dak can fake it, and then, boom, this whole side of the field is wide open for at least 15, 16, 18, 20 goddamn yards. So as I digress, 
Keep doing that shit because that I've never seen that formation before. If it's new, then yes. And 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 if some of the other teams have done it before, I don't know. But that's the first time I've seen it. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I loved it. Keep doing it. Um, but I just wouldn't use CD Lamb though. Let's 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 put Turpin in there. Let's not put CD Lamb in harm's way. But anyway, with that being said, y'all, and I pretty and I and I think I know why they did put CD Lamb in it because they wanted to look kind of normal, right? Because if you're putting those other guys that you don't normally play, they're thinking that oh, some one of them gonna get the ball. But I get it. But we'll talk more about that um, throughout this week. Um, but with that being said, man, this is your boy E2 Blue. Always keeping it real. Let me know what y'all think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell and tell your auntie, auntie, cousins, sisters, baby daddies, people you that you're hunching. Let them know about the channel. I'm out.